All right, so it looks like our friends at Lakeline have another solution for us uh, for the Taurus sights. Uh, first off, we'll make sure this firearm is clear. That's clear, and obviously we only need uh, the slide hitting under the frame to do this. Get that out of the way. Let's see what we got in the package. Looks like with all Lakeland parts uh, that we've dealt with, you get a nice full color instructions. Uh, lists out the tools that you need. We got Torx driver, small slotted, slotted head screwdriver, thread locking compound, uh, dags, side cutter, or nail clipper, uh, and a lighter. Long kind for lighting fires and burners best. We've got matches today. Let's see if that works. Right, so, first thing we need to do, let's see what else. Obviously. Alright, so that <coughs> empties the package. We've got our three fiber optic pieces. Because you get to choose between uh, orangish, a yellowish, and a reddish or pink is kind of what it looks like as far as where you want them. The rear sight. I notice it's got that nice flat edge you can use for. Uh, charging the firework need be, front sight and a replacement screw. So following our instructions, we got to put on our safety glasses. You can't see them, but I've got them on. Trust me. Uh, we filled strip the pistol, moving the slide, blah, blah, blah. So removing the factory sights, we'll get the rear sight off first with a I small, say small, I mean itty bitty like jeweler small. The problem is, if you can't get in there small enough, you will risk stripping, stripping the screw. So we'll get our rear sights off. And off goes the rear sight. You notice I did that with my thumb. That's because I'm incredibly strong. Now, actually, uh, one of the great things about these Taurus guns is how simply they're put together. Uh, no sight pusher needed. And for getting the front out, looks like we need the same type deal. You'll have to hold the sight to keep the screw from rotating the sight. And that's out. And I also noticed that I had this wonderful pin pop out. I'm guessing that was down in this hole here. Let's hope that's where it goes. All right, so moving on, we've got uh, that out of the way. We want to gently apply or apply a conservative amount of thread locker to the uh, threads. I'm going to put the screw back in the front sight so that I can find it later. I have a higher chance of finding this as a collective unit than I do individual pieces. Alright folks, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I ended up needing to convince this to fit. Uh, I checked it with my budget calipers and for some reason uh, it came out as the same size as the original. Uh, but I ended up convincing it a little bit with uh, a rubber mallet. So rather than make you endure all of that pounding and banging, uh, I'll just skip over it. So now we'll get that little screw back down in the center. You'll want to use thread locker on this. Because you don't want that screw popping out. Alright, for the front side, we've got a rather simple setup provided our sight and a screw what I found for an easier way to uh, not have to worry about fighting with that screw is to start the screw in the slide and then get your sight on at least part way that way you don't have to worry about holding the screw in place So 
That's a snug. So, when it comes to putting in your fiber optic strips, they're protected in this nice little bag. You can use a pair of dikes to cut the bag open. You have your choice of the three colors. How you want to do it is totally up to you. I prefer to have uh, a reddish color in the front and yellow or green in the back. So you want to insert these through and leave enough leftover uh, on each end so that when it melts it'll beat up onto there. So now we've got uh, our sights on a pinkish front and green rear. Fairly simple to do. Uh, takes a little bit of time, just got to have the tools, but a definite money saver and a big thanks to Lakeland LLC for making this option possible uh, since really you don't have many options out there.